We are live. What's cracking, everybody? How you doing? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapali here. And my business partner, fellow co-owner of PHP Agency, running out of the Oak Brook office here in a suburb right outside of Chicago. This is Big Daddy. I call him Big Daddy. Richard Love, retired Army First Sergeant. What's going on, brother? Feels good. Good. It's going good, Matt. It's going real good. Hey, to uh to all to all of our vets out there, man. Happy freaking Veterans, Veterans Day, Day, man. All right. Boom. This one's for you guys. This is not Memorial Day. It's a different day. This is Happy Veterans Day. Thank you for your service. This is for the old living. Mm-hmm. So uh Rich, what's uh what, what you drinking, bro? It's a it's a brewski. It's a brewski. Got some Amstel light. Gotta gotta worry about the calories as you get older. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Derek? Derek, how you doing, man? Semper Fi, and thank you for your service. And uh, we got uh, Tina. What's going on, Tina? How you doing? Uh, if we wouldn't mind, for those of you checking this out, man, happy Veterans Day to you guys. Please share this on your profiles. Let all the veterans you know uh, get a message from us. We're saying happy Veterans to you guys. And uh, I, I, fig I figured, Rich, since it was, uh, it was November 10th, Seven nineteen, no, excuse me, two thousand seventeen. I figured I'd wear my Tun Tavern, Marine. This, this, this is my birthday. Happy birthday, Marines! Here we go. You guys ready for this? Uh huh. Of course, Rich knows this song, right? I know it's come up. Come up. From the halls of oh, Montezuma. To the shores of Tripoli. I mean, I got my ass. <laughs> we fight our country's battles in the air. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, man. You baby. guys thought he was going Come for on, it. Baby. I thought he was going for it. There you go. And, uh, Devil dogs. Devil dogs. Happy Marine Corps birthday. Hey, Matt, you are going to their, as the annual tradition, Yes, you are going to the uh, Marine Corps ball this year. I, I, you know, I'm taking my bride. I'm taking my wife tonight. We're going to the uh, Chicago ball uh, downtown. At the uh, where, where is it? It is at the uh, 242nd Marine Corps birthday celebration uh, held by the Marine Corps Chicago Marines Foundation, and we're going to be at the Old Crow Smokehouse River tonight. And uh, by the way, there's no no solicitation. Listen, if you support the Marine Corps, you're a Marine. Uh, it's just a, it's not a ball, but it's just a birthday celebration. Awesome, awesome, pretty cool, man. Yes, good to all my Army doggy buddies out there, like this guy right here. See, Army Marines, we can get together, right? Yeah, and get along. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Happy Veterans Day. <laughs> Happy Veterans Day. So cool. Well, we want to give you guys some value today on 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 this. And listen, one of the, one of the things that we're very grateful for in terms of the United States of America is being able to be entrepreneurs. Has, yes. that, has entrepreneurship changed your life, brother? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, we run into this all the time, and uh, especially did this today, talking to a, uh, a franchisee's owner today. He owns five Firestones in the city of Chicago, and he understands being an entrepreneur, but it costs him 150 grand every time he opens up a, a franchise. Gotcha. A franchise being gotcha. franchisees. Yeah. You know, and he's, he's an immigrant from Mexico. And he's like, look, for the first two years I was in this country, I worked for somebody. Since then, the guy's 65 years old now. Uh -huh. uh, he's been his own boss, running a franchise system. He's 65. 65. Wow. Looks really young, good. doesn't he? He does. Energy. Excited. Being an entrepreneur, you know? creating. So uh, in the military, never around people like that. Never no. around it. So that's no. why it was so different. Um being just in that uh, that closed knit environment, we just weren't exposed to it, so yep. we didn't think it was possible. But man, being an entrepreneur is just about making a decision. What's going on, Sierra Sherrod and uh, BB? How you doing? Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, listen, guys, uh, we want to give you guys some value today. We, there's a lot of things that is very applicable to not only just entrepreneurs, but our own experience coming from active duty military. I spent eight years uh, on active duty as a, uh, as a combat marine veteran. You spent um, 21 years as a combat veteran to yourself from Afghanistan, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And by this, this award here, right here, man, he was awarded the bronze, the bronze star. Boom! Give Big Daddy Love some love um, in terms of serving our country and putting it out there, man. And uh, you know, one of the things that we've learned in terms of entrepreneurship is that we can translate that desire to serve and still have have that competitive nature and drive and that fight for 
those that can't fight for themselves. We just translate that to business today. And so um, we want to give you some value today on three things, three big lessons that we learned after leaving the military. And uh, these are lessons that um, they kind of just hit us in the face. Uh, they don't prepare you for it. Uh, but these are some lessons that I think will bring value to you, especially for those of you not only just leaving and transitioning out of the military, but I think some of you guys that are in a job right now or in a business right now, and you don't love the you don't love the career, you don't love the business. The business is running you, the career is running you. Instead of you running your life, man, and you living in a in a, in a position of happiness and of enjoyment and of purpose. So um, the first thing we realized that when we decided to make a career a career change and a switch from being retired, you were right. retired. I just decided to leave the Marine Corps. I, I became a single father with custody of my son. That we realized we were starting from scratch, right? We, we realized that there's a lot of people that we didn't relate to mm -hmm. coming into the civilian world. And at the same time, the civilians didn't understand us. Yeah. What, was, that, was that tough for you, brother? Oh, just uh, getting to learn to speak other languages <laughs> <laughs> and interpreting the other languages. It was. Um, you don't realize how sheltered you are in a, in a very uh, predictable, safe environment. As safe as we can, I mean, yeah. I say emotionally, probably, uh, in the military. It's just, it's very structured. I, that's why a lot of people are uh, drawn to it and stay in it. You know, it, it, you don't realize what type of box and really of a protective environment you are with inside the military. And for some of you, how does this translate to you guys, how protected you are in your current job mm -hmm. or current situation until you're out, until you're removed. Because for a large part of our lives, we are defined by our title. Yeah. We're defined by our MOS. We're defined by our unit, right? And then when you're out, you're defined by you, well, which which is uh, which is kind of kind of a weird thing, you know? Yeah, you kind of um, you're. I wouldn't say your um, identity stripped from you, but you kind of is. You know, coming uh, for my example, you know, being called uh, first sergeant and having the uh, the respect and the position that was, uh, you realize once you're out of the military, that was great when you were in. Yep. But that does not, you know, no, no one's jumping out of their chair when you walk into a room uh, yeah. when you're a civilian. No, not at all. You know. So what's going on, Jennifer Jung? Thanks for dropping your uh, Veterans Day greetings. Thank you, Jennifer Jung. Guillermo Gomez. Thank you, Guillermo. Memo. Uh, this is uh, Richard Ray Cordova. He says, happy Veterans I got I got I got I got a dad. I got a I got a dad joke for Richard Love here. Okay. Where do you grow chefs? Chef Garden? I don't know where. Bakersfield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, Richard Ray from oh, Bakersfield? That's for you, Cordova. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so you got to understand when leaving the military and you decide to become an entrepreneur, you're all by yourself. This is very hard to relate to a lot of things. and. And um, the standards, here's the thing too, the standards that you were used to in the military, like PT in the morning, right, uh, mm -hmm. uh, leading your troops. Listen, uh, your title meant nothing. You're a sergeant, oh, big deal. Okay, what can you do today? What can you do now? Like you can't carry your military service into the civilian world until you show something about it. Uh, you know, sometimes in, in the Marine Corps, in, in the Army, you can walk into a unit, walk into a platoon, and your reputation precedes you. Right. And that military reputation doesn't precede you when you go into the into the regular world. No, no, it's uh, I see a meme coming up on Facebook a lot saying, uh, you know, a lot of people have a college degree or a PhD, but it doesn't mean anything unless you got a DD two fourteen, right? <laughs> <laughs> but what I quickly found yeah. out, it doesn't matter. Yep. It doesn't matter. When I was out processing. The biggest stressor was make sure your DD-214 is straight. Make sure they got all your awards, your time. Make sure it's all correct. So there's a lot of stress on that. Yeah. There's also a lot of stress on your last evaluation as NCO leaving the military. Yeah. And you know what I found out in the civilian world? Doesn't mean anything. Nope. Doesn't mean nothing. So all the emphasis we put on putting our DD-214 together, yeah. what do you need that for? I, I still got my DD two fourteen in a drawer on my desk at home, and I haven't pulled. I, I, yeah. I haven't uh, used it. And they say make sure you you uh, follow it with the court when you get back to your do get back home. Follow with the court. Put it put in the court. It's yeah. got. It's like oh two fourteen. Yeah, I get it. Benefits kind of ways, but what's that going to do for you? Really nothing. Yeah, it doesn't do anything for you. 
You know, every time in a given move, man, uh, uh, Grunt Style, had, when we visited Grunt Style uh, yes. uh, earlier this summer, they gave us some some shirts to give to you guys. So uh, I got some shirts here, man. I, I still uh, they're stacked up here. So um, you know, I got a couple. I got a couple of ten ninety nine shirts, and I got a couple uh, Grunt Style shirts. So if you guys are watching the show, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to. I'm giving I'm giving away a lot of shirts today, man. So happy Veterans Day to you guys! Is our opportunity to give and give back. So I got some shirts. So one of the shirts we like to give out is we did a tour a while ago. It's called Boat 1099, where we're inspiring entrepreneurship from across the country. So if you share this video, we're going to go and select one of you guys to get this T-shirt, Vote 1099. Um, we got a shirt here from Grunt Style. Oh, this one. This, uh, this is a badass shirt. Uh, here, there's a, there's a shirt here uh, from Grunt Style. Uh, this uh, um, ran by Daniel Alaric. Mm -hmm. uh, I interviewed him a, a couple months ago, and he was on our vlog at uh, Living Money Smart. Great guy. So I got that shirt. I got this shirt. If you guys can share this one, uh, 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 we got. Uh, let's see, we got we got uh, this uh, join or die. It's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's another grunt style shirt. We'll give this it, to you guys. Comes in uh, kid sizes. <laughs> yeah. And then we got this shirt. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur shirt. We want to give this to you guys. If you guys share this video, so we got boom. We got one, two. We got some shirts to give out. If you share this video, man. So uh, we're in a given mood, man. And another thing we did bring from uh, Grunt Style is they have a, uh, they carried on a military tradition called uh, Beer 30. Uh-huh. So since it is yeah. um, Friday, officially Friday, Beer 30. Beer 30. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, you, you're you're Bruski. I'm a, I'm a whiskey type of guy. Happy Veterans Day to you guys. And um, we got to get some of that Merca bourbon, man. Yes. I heard that Merca bourbon from Grunt Style is pretty good. So, if, hey, hey, anybody out there can share this video. With America Bourbon, we love to pick it up. Where do we pick it up here? We're not asking for anything for free, but where, where can where can we uh, where can we buy it, man? Uh, but wait, let's let's talk about that real quick because you know there's a lot of a lot of veterans get out. You know we're we're a little bit of a different mindset. You know mm -hmm. there's a lot of veterans benefits, right? And um, you know the second big lesson that I learned um, getting out the military is that not everyone is supportive of you. You know they say thank you for your they service. Serve. They say, thank you for your service. And by the way, it's, it's kind of weird for us because like, thank you for your service. And like for a while, I've had a, I had to find a way to respond to that. Was mm -hmm. it, was it awkward for you? And so it, it still thing? is. Yeah, it still, it still is. is. Right. And, uh, um, uh, 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 Hey Veronica, thank you for your, uh, uh, birthday wishes and veterans day wishes. Um, Sean David, what's going on, bro. Thank you for your veterans day wishes too, as well. But, uh, you know, um, you know, why is it weird for you to say thank you for somebody saying thank you for your service? I don't know. I, it's um, let's let's, pro let's pro you, you, How know. many other veterans out there feel the same way when somebody comes up to you and says thank you for your service? And by the way, these are we are two kids that we grew up in Chicago. And we both enlisted, of course, at different time, but maybe a year apart. A year apart, almost uh, almost exactly a year. Apart. Almost exactly a year apart. As soon as we graduated high school, we were both seventeen years old. He left for the Army. I left for the Marine Corps. Um, I left in uh, 19, 1991. 1990. So a year, yeah, exactly a year apart. So I was 1991, tail end of the Persian Gulf War. And uh, you're right there in, in the mix of things. Yeah. Uh, Gulf War kicked off when I was in uh, basic training. Yeah. What, what do you guys say? We say, oorah. What did the Army say? Hua. Hua. <laughs> There's a distinct difference. The Marines can't pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're working on it. They're working on it. Listen, man, we need some crayons <laughs> and some big pictures. So when when we're thinking when we're thinking about um, uh, thank you for your service, I mean, a movie just came out and, and, and guys all twisted and, and you know just dealing with it. We realize that if if people say thank you for your service, we thank you for that support. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how do you feel when people just give you stuff? Yeah, never. I mean, just it just doesn't stop. It doesn't. It doesn't work. You know, in um, when I was in recruiting command, we're a lot of times in the in the civilian uh, public in uniform, mm -hmm. right? And it would always awkward uh, when you're in a restaurant and the check would come and someone would be like, "No, it's already been taken care of." Yep. You know, you feel like ah, it goes against being a military member of being self sufficient, right? Taking care of yourself, you know, it's like serving a purpose. And so we don't, we're not used to getting free stuff. We don't like free stuff, right. um, and, and it's. It's a whole different thing about that. But also going back to, you know, thank you for your service. It's like, man, I loved it. I loved it. This is this is what we wanted to do. It's kind of weird to getting, you know, it's got to play this way. Um, 
you have a good kid. Someone thanks you. Hey, thanks for being such a great parent. You raised such a great kid. Well, aren't I supposed to? You're supposed to do that. <laughs> That's by default. You know, we're not asking for a pat on the back. We weren't asking for a pat on the back for thank you for your service. This is what we want to do. We asked for it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we were just looking for a way out of Chicago, looking for a job, you know, and yeah, and, um, and it ended up, why, why not? Yeah. <laughs> it ended up be, becoming something bigger than us, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, my, my encouragement for you guys, if you guys are considering entrepreneurship, and the exciting thing about entrepreneurship is that you have to be about other people, you have to be about giving. You know, we have a saying here that life gives to the givers, takes from the takers, and has a very accurate accounting system. And if you're not a giver, if you're not, a, if you don't desire to solve people's problems, you're not looking to create a solution to solve somebody's problems, and make their life better. Uh, you you just may not survive as an entrepreneur. Um, it becomes less and eliminate. You need you need to eliminate selfishness, and you need to continue to adopt that selflessness. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. Be, you know, and uh, being an entrepreneur, running your own business. Now, if you want to be self-employed, then hey, you can be selfish all day long. You can be a computer programmer, a yeah. identity theft guy, Homeland Security specialist. I don't know what college degrees they, they'll get you for 30 grand, but you would be one of those yeah. and work for yourself. But being an entrepreneur like Matt introduced me, being an entrepreneur, he had to pour in uh, into me so I could become an entrepreneur. And now for me to be a successful entrepreneur, I got to do the same thing. Made some nice money the last few uh, few months, right? All pretty good. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Rich loves making some cash. Look, look at that <laughs> smile, man! Look at that. You can't even yes. hide it. No, you can't even hide that smile. But I would say to other veterans out there, and expose, especially to other aspiring entrepreneurs, don't get caught up in your pity party, man. Listen, I know you went through some shit, right? I know you went through some crap. I know you went through some very very tough times, man. But the hardest thing sometimes when I get involved in some of these veterans groups, yeah, it becomes one big, you know. Uh, you know, one big depressive party and there's a chain that goes on and listen, there's, there's things that, you know, I, I'm glad there's groups out there to support because guys handle things differently. Listen, we're both combat veterans. Uh, we, 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 we faced action and we, we were in the mix of things and uh, there's certain things that uh, you think you're prepared for and, and, uh, and you, you know, you're ready for it when you see it, but then there's some things that shit you didn't prepare for and like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm seeing this. Can't believe I'm experiencing this, but you, you learn to move on. And, and what I've realized yeah. that if you are going through life still looking through a rear view mirror and you're going forward, it's only a matter of time before you get into an accident. If you decide to move forward in your life, just like the vehicle that you choose to go in, let your, like your next career or your business, you've got to go forward. And it's better for you to look out the windshield than it is looking out the rear view mirror. What do you think about that? Totally makes sense. I mean, because you kind of, you know, the stigma on, on a military or everyone wants to, you know, give stuff to the military. For one, they think we're jacked up. I mean, I don't need a free meal from Applebee's, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. And I don't need a handout for a job. And you kind of look at your military service, whatever, you know, like Matt says, you know, you, you've been through some stuff. But imagine back when you went through that. It's not like you could get a time out. Hey, time out. Yeah. No, you got to keep going forward. You got to move. You got to move. You got to, yeah. you know, call the evac in, get it, get it all done. You still got to move. There ain't and no stress cards in that crap, man. And you can't come home. Yeah. You know, so it's just when you come back is that the tempo, the op tempo goes down. So you're not creating in your mind, you know, because I remember uh, I got involved in this industry. I was probably back for maybe four months. Three from to four, three from to Afghanistan. Four months. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you got to create, man. You got to keep your mind going because the minute it you slow yourself down, um, you're not creating in your mind and you're not constantly keeping active. Then you are constantly staring in that rearview mirror and then things come up in front of you that kind of startle you. So and I get it. I, I'm not saying it's not real and stuff, but you think about it. If uh, if your number one thing is to sit around and dwell about the past and not saying anything bad about support groups or anything. I just don't belong to one that why dwell in the past when I have the future? And, you know, here we're here to celebrate Veterans Day, not Memorial Day. That's right. That's totally different. Right. Yeah. So Veterans Day, take the opportunity that was given to you as a veteran mm -hmm. and that same pride you carried as as wearing the uniform, as, as being recognized with your title and stuff. You owe it to society you owe it to your other federal brothers and, and probably those that didn't make it back to make the best of your life 
that veteran is not your highlight in your life. It was just the beginning for the second phase. So, you know, as a veteran, we owe it to other veterans and we owe it to those uh, brothers and sisters who don't have the opportunity we have. Mm -hmm. And that's why in Veterans Day, we appreciate the veterans that are around. Mm -hmm. On Memorial Day, we eat a big ass burger, drink a lot of beer to celebrate those that, that aren't here. Because what would they do if they were here? The same damn thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. What's up to uh, Alex Guzman and uh, Jay Cruz? What's going on, man? Thank you for your Veterans Day wishes. Alex, thank you. Yes, Veterans making this. I appreciate that, big dog. Listen, we all can make a difference. We went, your veterans go to serve, to fight, to defend America, to protect our freedoms. We want to make sure that the things that we fight for, A, that you're utilizing that freedom, and B, we're utilizing it too as well. Yeah. We fought for it. Might as well do something about it and do something big with it. You know, and uh, if you're out there and, and you're having a tough time coming to, 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 to fellow vet, uh, vets coming back and you have a tough time dealing with them stuff, and he, here's the biggest thing, find ways to make money. Stay active. You know, it's, to me, school lasted for a short period of time. I had a very hard time just sitting still and, 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 and being in a classroom studying books. I had to be out. I had to be active. I had to be doing things. Thank God somebody taught me sales. Thank God somebody taught me entrepreneurship. So therefore, I can go with hands-on or, or, you know, boots on the ground type stuff. I don't have time to think about things. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be able to control what you can control. Regardless if you're a veteran or an aspiring entrepreneur, you got to understand that, man, life is going to hit you in the mouth. Life wants to derail you. You got to be able to control what you can control. You got to find ways to eliminate distractions, right? Get, uh, uh, have conversations with. Uh, sometimes supportive family members or even non-supportive family members, supportive vel veterans and guys in uniform and guys out of uniform. There's a bunch of Marines that follow me now that it was from my former unit that are following me right now on Facebook. You may or may not be watching this, either watching the live or watching the replay, but you're still watching my stuff. You remember when you didn't support me. <laughs> you remember when I was coming out to the Marine Corps, some of you guys said, oh, okay, Sapala, so what the heck do you know about finance? What the heck do you know about entrepreneurship? We'll see you back in the unit in 30 days. Guess what? You know what they saw in 30 days? my checks because I refuse to go back. So even though my brothers in the Marine Corps didn't support me getting out, right? I had to say, you know what? I can control what I can control. You know, it, yeah, it, it was disappointing that they weren't supporting me. It was disappointing that the guys I looked up to that I, that I, that I was uh, in, in the crap with the blood, sweat and tears and all that stuff. They weren't supporting me getting out, but guess what? I got to control what I can control. They don't pay my bills. They're not raising my family. They're not raising my son. I am. And that's the time I decided to be a dad and, and, and reprioritize my life. You know, just like you decided to reprioritize your life, you know, because you're thinking about, you think about reenlisting when I met you. It was in your 19th year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was uh, get out at 20 or do another 10. Yeah. And, and by the way, here in the military right now, January 1st, the military retirement is changing. Yeah. It's called a blended retirement. Right, where the TSP is going and, and the pension is going. So this weird blended retirement. So it's to rip people off. It's basically what it is. You know, so the, the, the idea is not to do 20 years in the military. I no. think that's what they're trying to get people yeah. to do. They, they say the uh, optimal time is 10 years. So 10, you, 10 and out now. 10 and out because uh, you're less expensive uh, personnel uh, cost. So 10 years, you're kind of maxed out of what they can. Uh, you become unprofitable at 10. So they can get people to get out. It's a win-win for them. Yeah. So three big lessons. Uh, uh, number one, you understand you're starting from scratch. A lot of people won't relate to you. You won't relate to them. Number two, that everybody is supportive as much as you think they are, even though they are in uniform, even though your family, your friends, a lot of people aren't supportive about your decision to follow your heart, to follow your passion, to find out what you really want to do for life after uh, being in uniform. The third thing that that um, I learned a lot, which I'm very glad I, I learned in the Marine Corps, and I'm able to express it in business today, is that I learned that I needed to be even more resourceful. When I'm talking about being even more resourceful, so what do I mean by that? Does it does it mean sitting in line for two days, three days, getting all your veterans' benefits? Listen, I, I, I tell you this: I've got 40% tears in my patella tendons. I've got uh, shoulders. I got. Uh, we got uh, um, uh, vaccinations. We took from uh, going overseas. I remember taking anthrax pills. Degenerative disc. Everyone. I get. Yeah, we got bad backs, man. I mean, we we laugh all the time about we're, we're in our forties now. We laugh about how, how how long it takes for us to get from point A to point B. <laughs> you know, and so 
I uh, want you guys to know, listen, you got to be, you got to be resourceful. Take care of your body. Uh, uh, find, find ways to eat better because those MREs, man, they sucked, you know? And so, um, you, you got to apply your time and focus to what gives you the best rate of return for your time and energy spent in doing it. Right. The, the last thing I, I wanted to find myself doing was, okay, I'm just going to go back and punch the clock in for 40 hours a week, 60 hours a week, and I still have nothing to show for. It, right. What are some of the ways that when you left the military, how did you become more resourceful on your end when you retired after 21 years in the Army as a first sergeant? Well, uh, resourceful. But you know what? Um, I was just fortunate being. Um, Somebody's hitting on you, man. Can I get your number, Rick? You are hot. <laughs> Karen. Ooh, look at that hottie blonde hair. Must be the chin. It must be the chin. I tell you, this is a good breeding stock right here. <laughs> I make some beautiful babies. <laughs> Um, see, I, I mean, it, it, it's kind of hard because, um, you know, no, from the, no, you know, how Matt and I met each other, you know, when he first started his financial career, I recruited and I was a national guard recruiter. I was two years in my military career or my financial career. Yeah. So right time, right place. Got him in a, got him in a black Hawk helicopter. Long story short, he got the, he got to see Chicago from up above national guard one week in a month. Not a big deal for him. Uh, fast forward, he recruited me. Uh, when, just right timing, but those resources, man, I was so fortunate to be working with this guy, you know, uh, you know, not only transition from the military, but transition back into, uh, the, the regular, uh, run in the mill of, of every day coming off of deployment and working in business. And, uh, I, I just got lucky. I got to lean on him a lot. So, uh, I like to say he drug me along kicking and screaming the whole way. He never gave up on me. And, here it is today. I'm, you know, I'm running my own agency. I'm, I'm, I got multiple offices. I'm, I'm, I'm running. You have Minnesota now too. Huh? I got Minnesota. Minnesota uh, I'm a part owner of, of a multi-million dollar company. And the irony of your Minnesota operation, um, you got a couple studs there from Iraq. <laughs> yes. Isn't that the crazy part about it, man? We got a bunch of Iraqis working. In Iraqi our refugees. You know, uh, Christians from Iraq. Um, as the U.S. is pulling out or pulling back. Um, they, they basically had to pick up their families and, and get out in the, the, in the middle of the night, end of darkness. And a lot, I wasn't, I wasn't stationed in Iraq, but you know, we, we get the briefings and stuff. So you know what it is. And they were interpreters work for the U S and when things scaled down, Hey, get out of the neighborhood we're, we're, or we'll kill you. Yeah. So here they are, they're kids that when they left Iraq, they were uh, 12, 13 years old. And now wow. they're here taking full advantage of being entrepreneurs running a business in Minnesota. And when I put people yeah. in front of them, I mean, they're in their early twenties, man. You, you look at their fire. They're like, Oh my God, yep. if I was born in this country, but I, I, I've only been here five or six years. Now I got to take full responsibility of, of, of running a business and making money. They just, they are totally blown away how you can run your own business and never have a boss. In America. In America. No dictatorship. No dictatorship. Yeah, because in Iraq, there was a dictator. Yeah, and it was kind of funny. I mean, you, you see it, you saw the, the kind of uh, activity they got in Minnesota. Yeah, up. They, they're blowing up there, man. Very proud of you, John. Was it Steven out there too as well? Yeah, Steven Kakos. Ka Steven Kakos. Like Big. Kakos would a kid. <laughs> Kakos. Big shout out to you guys. And John Daniel. I mean, you guys are uh, pioneers, man. Pioneers. And uh, the huge immigrant community up there. Yeah. Yeah. A ton of entrepreneurs. And just so you guys know, it, it, you know, we run our own business. You don't need a lot of money to start your own business. You now, be resourceful. I mean, we invested less than, what, four or 500 bucks each yeah. to, <laughs> to, to, start, to start a business. I mean, that's what it, when I first got started in 1998, 1999, uh, I just invested in some state, state licenses. I invested in a business license. That's it, right? I used a service-based expertise type of business to provide value for our biggest problem that people had, which is getting out of debt and how to get ahead financially. That's when I, uh, I did that for 12 years. But my first business was you know, the financial services industry. And I was finding myself working for my, last time I took a check for somebody else, because of resource, being resourceful, doing more with less, the skills that we already learned in the military. Uh, in 2001, I stopped working for anybody else. The last time I took a W two for something, they filled out a W two to get a you know W you know what do you call those things when you get in the mail? I don't know W twos now. W twos. The last time I filled out one of those things was in two thousand and one. Ever since then, 
I've been, I've been I've been voting 1099, man. Vote 1099. And by the way, we're giving out one of these shirts. You, sh you share this. Uh, you share this video. We're giving out this vote 1099 shirt. We're giving out a I am an entrepreneur shirt. Still in this package. We're gonna have a couple grunt style shirts too as well. These bad mamba gens. If you share this video, so um, yeah, man. What's 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 another way that people can be resourceful? Veterans, civilians. How can they? How, where is a, a bunch of waste that you think a lot of people? Uh, unknowingly waste either time or money in that if they just say, you know what, let me let me get rid of that waste because one man's garbage is another man's treasure. I, I think a lot of um, one is waste is uh, research. You know, it's like, well, I got to research this. I got to research this. I got to research this. Well, hey, I tell you what, anything you want to find on, on the Internet, you'll find it. Good or bad. Good or bad. You you hey, you want to get a, find a way to get talked out of something, you'll find it. You want to find something that's going to reinforce your uh your decision, you'll find it. But to cut a lot of that time out is just partner with somebody who's doing what you want to do and go intern with them. Mm -hmm. You know, do it for free. Join, be part of their business. Whatever you want to get around them, get around them and be and, and, and use their time. So instead of investing in all this time in research, invest your time with them. Now you want to talk about monetary. Um, the biggest thing right now, how many junior colleges or stuff are starting to launch entrepreneur programs? Okay, you're going to teach me entrepreneur in a structured curriculum classroom. No, so take that tuition money, <laughs> right? Live off it, and then go again intern with someone who's in the same uh, arena that you're in. And you know what? It might be family. Uh, we had a young kid came in came in our office and. He wanted to be a uh, construction. He wanted to be a general contractor, construction, flipping houses. Yep. And I said, why do you want to do that? He goes, well, my dad does, and he's very successful. He builds commercial property. I said, why don't you work with your dad? Oh, we have a falling out. I said, dude, you're an idiot. Suck up your pride. Go work with your dad. Learn what you need to learn with your dad, and then go out on your own. Hopefully, he did it. But this guy was willing. He's going out there trying to spend money when he could just work for his dad for free. Yep. So be resourceful. See what's out there. See what you can work with. See what you want to do. I mean, if uh, uh, somebody found Matt, Matt driving his uh, his beautiful Batmobile, beautiful <laughs> car, the guy's like, hey, uh, I want to do what you do. Will you show me? Sure. Yep. Look at this comment here from my card. There's a there's a blanket. Then there's no a a avenue at the age when you exit. Then you're not accustomed to the civilian sectors. True, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then the pressure of bills and family needs. A college degree is great, but with or without one, what do you do with it? Nine to five or work for yourself? I struggle with that. I work nine to five government, work at Quantico. Are you a, a devil dog, Mike? Uh, uh, but with one mistake, I'm, uh, yeah. but with one mistake, I'm done. Yep. No true security. That's not include my bills and mishaps. I feel, I feel, uh, I feel stagnant. So, hey, hey, hey uh, um, I, I think you're, I think you're a marine. So I, I tell you, devil dog, listen, hey, the worst type of target, I mean, it's our av advantage. If I see a target standing still, I'm done. I got it. Mm -hmm. One shot, two kills. The hardest target to hit is a moving target. You've got to freaking move. He's a devil dog. Yes, yes. sir. Ooh, freaking rock. Hoorah. Happy Marine Corps birthday, devil dog. And so uh, you got to move, man. So if, if you feel that your heart says, I need to consider working for myself, then work for yourself. And then like what Rich said, find somebody that's doing already what you think you should be doing. And if you haven't figured that out yet, just find somebody that's successful in their endeavor. Shut up and listen to them because along the way of long you doing it, you're going to find, you're going to find, you're going to find your happiness. You're going to find your passion. You're going to find your purpose by doing. Like when I, when I uh, enlisted in Marine Corps, I, you know, I was like, okay, that's cool. It's the roughest, toughest, you know, a boot camp out there. But by becoming a Marine, by going through the uh, 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 MCT, Marine Combat Training, and just getting drilled in by your gunnery sergeant, your staff, your staff NCOs, your, your NCOs that's grooming you and leading you, man, I found tradition and passion and teamwork and, and a brotherhood by doing it, not hanging out at the squad bay, mm -hmm. right? So that, that's my, that's my uh, so transfer everything that you've done in the military, do it for yourself. All you got to do is just, just transit and, and walk forward with faith. And you know what? Uh, in, the, in the Marine Corps, in the military, the, a miscalculation can cost you can cost you lives, right? I, I totally get it. That's why a lot of guys are, are scared to pull the trigger when it comes to entrepreneurship. But I'm telling you this. In the world of entrepreneurship, 
There is no grenades, <laughs> right? There is no IEDs. There is no, there is no snipers. And I'll tell you, the, o- the only grenade and sniper and IEDs are is in action. Listening to people that are broke. Listening to the people that aren't doing it. They're doubting. You know, you know what you're reminding them when you decide to go out and step out in faith? You're reminding them what they should be doing themselves. Mm-hmm. But they're too scared to do it. And you're taking courage to do it. So my recommendation is you go forward in faith, man. I mean, you've got a lot of buddies when you, you were leaving. I mean, a sergeant major you looked up to. A mm-hmm. colonel you looked up to. When you told them that you got involved in business, working for yourself in the financial service and in the insurance industry, what did they tell you? Oh, here yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want to get into it. But um, there, it's it's something new. It's something scary for them. So you got to you, you got to realize. And, and you know, I was fortunate enough to be mentored, uh, you know, by a fellow veteran that walked me through this stuff. And as Matt was saying, you know, find someone there. But here's the other thing too, right? You find someone who's willing to pour into you, right, and not charge you. I mean, there's a totally different thing if you got to get to the next level, investing in coaches and all this other stuff, totally get it. But first, you got to find that mentor that's going to pour into you. And having that um, in, in this environment, and that person will will invite you to get mentored by their mentors. So that's a good mentor-mentee relationship. Now, here's what you have to do as a mentee. Mm. Follow instruction and move with speed. Don't question. Now, we got great filters as military members, sometimes a little too tight. As Matt was saying, my journey as an entrepreneur, right, is if something didn't go right, man, I was like, oh, I'll beat myself up. He's like, would you stop beating yourself up? You're welcome to be an entrepreneur. Guess what? You're going to make mistakes. Things aren't going to go right. This and that. But if you don't give up, you stick to the system. Stop holding yourself to this high level of standards like in the military. Very little room for error. Show up for work five minutes late. You got to talk to the man. Five minutes. But an entrepreneur, man, you're going to make mistakes. You're 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 going to learn. It's just that you act on that. And that's what we tell our newest privates. Right. Our new our, our new kids that come into our platoons. You know, hey, good initiative. Bad judgment. Don't do it again. So move forward. You do it again. Now we got a disciplinary problem. Now it wasn't coachability. It was you're an idiot. But <laughs> but in, in yeah. uh, say what entrepreneurship. Hey, hey, at least a great initiative, you know, and, um, you know, so use those filters as military because a lot of those guys that I worked with, he said, like the sorry majors, the majors, the colonels, the people I looked up with told me not to work with this guy. Right. Yo, me. Other people. Hey, you, you didn't hear about this guy. You can tell me anything you want about Matt, but I spent enough time with him to know his character tells me this. So I don't care what you tell me, you whatever you're 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 trying to tell me. I spent a lot of time with this guy and he poured time into me and made me financially independent where I can make my own money. And these, and these guys money. don't even know me. They don't even know. Him. So, <laughs> so I trusted I trusted my instincts as, as somebody saying, you know what? I know what you're telling me, but that's not what I see. So unless you're willing to spend time with him uh, yourself, and that goes as far as now, that's the approach I go with working with my newer people that join me in business because I'm coaching and mentoring them, regardless of what their background, where they came from, regardless of of whatever somebody tells me about them, I judge them on the work we do together and the actions they bring forward. And that's all we want in life. We just want someone to give us a, a, a square shot, you know. But but life doesn't give that to you. An employer doesn't do that for you. Even before you give me a shot, I want to see that you spent four years in some institution to give you a piece of paper. OK, you, you can you can write a paper about the war 1812 and you know your periodic tables. Good job. Now you can be a computer analyst. What? I didn't have a degree in that. Yeah. But unless you want to sit down for a job, you need that piece of paper. That's it. So my man. Well, listen, guys, I, uh, one one book I would definitely recommend for you guys to read if you haven't read it already. And I think for those of you who have read it, read it, reread it again. This book changed my life, man. It was written in 1997 and became a bestseller in 2000. It's called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's a tale of two father figures in Robert Kiyosaki's life. And Robert Kiyosaki, uh, Robert Kiyosaki here is also a veteran. He is a United States Marine, Japanese, uh, raised in Hawaii and uh, fought in the Vietnam War. He was also a merchant marine, and he was uh, raised in Hawaii with two father figures at nine, ten years old. His one of his fathers said, "Go to school, 
get good grades, get a job, so you can financially you can be financially secure for the rest of your life. Guess whose dad that was? That was his own dad. That was his dad, right? He called him his poor dad. But his rich dad, who was his best friend's uh, father, says, no, buy assets, invest into yourself. Don't necessarily listen, listen to the nine to five, follow your heart, follow your passion, get financial education and, and increase your financial literacy because you don't know what you don't know. And that's not necessarily a good thing because you thought you were doing something right, but later found it, later found it was wrong. When would you want to know? And make a long story short, Robert Kiyosaki's father died a very broke guy, died a very broke man, and his best friend's father uh, passed away a very wealthy entrepreneur uh, with uh, sugar cane plantations all over all over Hawaii. And he learned how to he learned how to not to work for money. He learned how to have money work for him. Why? Because rich dad bought assets that created cash, whereas poor dad went to work for nine to five. He worked for money, punched in the clock to get a paycheck, and he realized there's two different concepts, two different philosophies, two, two different varying levels of education and understanding when it comes to money. So, you know, my biggest suggestion to you guys, and by the way, are we ever done learning? I mean, we've been yeah. doing this for a minute. Are we, are we ever done learning everything about business and finance and entrepreneurship? Never. You never will. That's what's so beautiful about this thing. You constantly are creating you're constantly learning. You're constantly growing. You know that keeps you young, yeah. keeps you motivated, keep, keeps you keeps you running. Yeah. You know, and and if you find yourself, it's like, man, if you can't wake up in the morning, you know, there's no purpose. That's what's going to get you, especially our veterans out there. If you're feeling that, you're feeling un, you know, here's what it is, guys. Take a shot. Take a shot. We're here for a, a matter of time. Um, I have, I have. Uh, yeah, because if you don't take a shot. You'll never know. And, and your life is going to be the same time this time next month, this time next year. And then you're going to get older. You're going to get more cynical. And, it, and, and the, the, the muscle of fear grows mm -hmm. versus the muscle of going out in faith. Yeah. My two cents. You got to take a shot, man. If someone's got to push you out the door, Airborne, then someone's got <laughs> to push you out the door. But you're going to want out that door. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, listen, thank you for tuning in to this live stream video. We do a vlog called Living Money Smart Vlog uh, twice a month uh, to show everybody what it takes for us to build the next multi-billion dollar agency. Yes, we just said that. Multi-billion dollar agency. We are solving for B. And how much education we get in college to do that? I don't know zero. <laughs> zero. Zero. Zero, man. So, um, and uh, uh, hey, my my boy, Maurice Williams, happy birthday, devil dog. He re man, Maurice remembers when I started my business in 1999, man. So I've known Matt for almost 20 years now. I would have not had my own business or being busy. It wasn't for Matt. He's a phenomenal brother and phenomenal mentor on the other side of fears. Bliss. Go yes. for your dreams. My man, Maurice Williams. My man, Moe. By the way, he's got a great cigar brand. Uh -huh. uh, so, so he went out there and created his company, man. When every time I'm in Washington D.C., um, uh, uh, I remember him and his, his wife Grace uh, when they were on the military base in in California, man. So, uh, Maurice, good to see you, man. Happy Marine Corps birthday, Happy Veterans Day, brother. But uh, we want you to know, guys, the journey of an of journey of entrepreneurship, man. Once you figure out how to make money. That's, that's the most awesome feeling in the world when you start to learn how to make money. Why? Because now you got your control right here. You're the one squeezing the trigger, right? You're the one pulling the pin. You're the one calling the shots. You're the one in the command post, man. So, and you know what? It feels the same way. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Think, think about it. Put yourself back there, veterans. Calling the shots, running a patrol, being in charge, moving pieces around, right? Sitting in the talk, any of those positions where you felt you're at your highest running things, that's what being an entrepreneur is. That's what you're missing out in. That's why you're getting stagnant in life. Take that shot. Take back in control. And that's the, it's exactly, man, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah. That's exactly what it feels like. Yeah. Leadership, man. If you haven't expressed your leadership, you know it's in you. You gotta, it's not gonna, you're not gonna find it at the 7 Eleven. Unless, of course, you own the 7-Eleven. You know, you can either be a worker, you can be a manager, you can be an owner. What do you want to be?
And if you don't know what you want to be, connect with somebody that you think is somebody you want to be. Connect with them, like he said. Connect with them. Work under the wing. I remember uh, we met uh, Chris Garden. Remember we went to yeah. a nationwide car series and mm-hmm. brought a couple of stogies, and I introduced you to uh, Chris Gardner, uh, Mr. Pursuit of Happiness, mm-hmm. where Will Smith played his role, and you know he walked and stepped out in faith. And if there's a guy that had a lot of excuses, that was him too as well. Uh, believe it or not, guess what? He was a, he's a veteran too. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't realize he's a uh, he's a veteran. He was in the Navy. Um, um, he had a, a, a best friend named Pookie, which is my son's name. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, nickname, of course. But uh, listen, there, there's a lot of veterans out there doing a lot of things. And, and some of you guys use his product every day. You ship his product every day. It's a multi, multi, multi-billion dollar company. And his, his college professor told him he would fail. You know, what the name of this, uh, you know what the name of this entrepreneur is? It's Fred Smith, and he built FedEx. There's a lot of – I think that's another video we do. Yeah. Famous veterans you never thought were military yeah. Very uh, famous entrepreneurs you never knew were military veterans, right? There's a lot of veterans out there that are great entrepreneurs. Sadly, it's not being spoke, spoken a lot about. And uh, sadly, the journey of entrepreneurship isn't talking about not only just the military veterans or military service members, but also to the civilian community as a whole. And uh, I'm just glad that somebody taught me the gift of entrepreneurship. Somebody taught me sales. Somebody taught me entrepreneurship. Somebody taught me how to pick the right industry. And somebody taught me how to pick the right jersey to wear, the right platform to build your business upon. So, hey, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your support. Thanks for your love and shout outs. Uh, Doc, Doc Derek from uh, Rancho Office, uh, God bless you, man. Thank you for your service. Uh, Mr. Barry, appreciate you, man. Yvonne Everett, hey, uh, big shout out to your husband who was, uh, what was it? I think, uh, Mr. Air, he was an Air, Air Force, Force, right? He was in the Air Force. Good to see you guys. And uh, happy Veterans Day to you guys, and we encourage you to make the most of the freedoms that somebody bled for, fought for, and that you have today to make the very best version of you. So that being said, man, happy Veterans Day. One last toast. Happy Veterans Day. Semper Fricker Fi, Marine Corps birthday today, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, and continue to love smart, smart, and be money smart, smart today. Woo! Thanks, bro, Ian. Good one. Thank you. Thank Vibing, you. man. I just saw the sun is getting darker and darker. <laughs> darker right behind It's only 4.30. Shit. Do you want a beer? Yeah. I'm going to chase her. How was uh, travels? Cool, man. You know, uh, Jacksonville's got it going on. Orlando. Mason's got something going on in Orlando. That new guy mm-hmm. coming on, kind of a little fire on their fucking Mason's eyes. Mm-hmm. You stay with that guy? Uh.